Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to normalize combinations of orthonormal wave functions. What does that mean? Well, if a set of wave functions is orthonormal, that means they're both orthogonal and normalized. But probably I should introduce to you what orthogonal and normalized means. So that's what we're going to do in the first part of this video. I'm going to show you what it means for wave functions to be orthogonal and normalized. And then we're going to take advantage of these properties to normalize a wave function in a really easy way. So by the time you get to the end of this video, you're going to think, wow, wave functions that are orthonormal are awesome. They're super easy to normalize. Okay. So first, what is orthonormal? Well, orthonormal is a property of a collection of wave functions that's both normalized and orthogonal. Normalized means that when we multiply a wave function by itself and integrate, that is we follow this formula, we get out one. And we're probably already familiar with that property. Orthogonal, what does that guy mean? Well, before we can say what orthogonal means, we have to be dealing with a collection of wave functions. So if we're dealing with a collection of wave functions, say psi one, psi two, and psi three, and they're all orthonormal. Well, that means that they're normalized. That is, this top integral is equal to one. The orthogonal part applies to this sort of integral. When we have the uh, integral of psi one times psi two, that is, we're not multiplying the same wave function, we're taking two different wave functions and multiplying them together. And it turns out that's equal to zero, which is always what you like things to be equal to if you want your math to be easy, right? So if we multiply psi one by psi two and integrate, we get zero. That's what it means to be orthogonal. If we multiply psi two by psi three, we'll also get zero. If we multiply psi one by psi three, we'll also get zero. So that's what orthogonal means. A way we can state this more generally is if we multiply psi n times psi n, we'll get out one. If we multiply psi n times psi m where those aren't the same number, then we'll get out zero. So if we have a set of wave functions that are orthonormal, when we integrate a wave function times itself, we get one, that's the normalized part. If we integrate a wave function times any other wave function that's not itself, we get zero. And it turns out this is a really important property because if you look at solutions to the Schrodinger equation, you put in a potential, right, to the Schrodinger equation, and you can get out wave functions. Well, it turns out that set of wave functions you get out are all going to be orthogonal with respect to each other. So this doesn't turn out to be some obscure property of some small set of wave functions. It turns out to be very common in quantum mechanics, and that's why it's so useful. Let's actually use it. So this problem says that psi of x is formed by a linear combination of the orthonormal wave functions phi n. Determine the constant n so that psi is normalized. So first of all, let's just talk about what we're doing here. We're taking two wave functions and we're mixing them together. And that's making a new wave function. And in quantum mechanics, we do this all the time. This is called a superposition of states or a linear combination. And basically, we're just adding together pieces from two different wave functions to make a new wave function. And conveniently, anytime you have wave functions that are solutions to the Schrodinger equation, if you add them together, like this is being done here in linear combinations, that will also be a solution to the Schrodinger equation. So it's really useful to be able to mix wave functions uh, because we know there'll still be solutions to the Schrodinger equation. And this particular mixture is saying it's two parts psi one and one part psi two. Now, you might be confused here because you might say to yourself, hey, wait a minute, I thought you just told me that orthonormal wave functions are normalized, so what are we doing normalizing this thing? Well, here's the key thing to realize. This guy, psi one and psi two, those are normalized. However, that's actually phi one and phi two, my bad. Psi over here, that guy is not normalized. So when I take combinations of normalized wave functions and I mix them together, I don't always get out something that's normalized. In fact, normally I won't. So what I have to do is normalize that resulting mixture. And that's where the orthonormal properties will make our life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and do that. What does that look like? Well, just like when we normalize any other wave function, we want to do psi of x times psi of x dx equals 1. That's the formula we're going to use. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and plug this guy in for psi of x. So we're going to get the integral of n times 2 phi 1 plus phi 2. And these guys are the complex conjugates, which means we're going to get little stars up here that mean they're the complex conjugates. In practice, this won't really change how we solve our problem. But since this guy was a complex conjugate, that means we take the complex conjugate of both guys inside our wave function. 
And then we multiply by our original wave function, 2 phi 1 plus phi 2 dx. All right, now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to FOIL these wave functions. So because we're multiplying together two things that are being added, we're going to take this guy and multiply it by here and multiply it by here. We can also go ahead and collect our constants out. So we're going to go ahead and take n and put it in front of the wave function. Let's use blue. So we got n squared, and then we're going to do first this uh, phi 1 times phi 1. And so what we're going to get there is 4 phi 1 squared. And then the second one, we're going to get plus 2 phi 1 complex conjugate phi 2. And then we're going to do this guy times that, continuing the foiling process, and that's going to give us 2, two phi 1 phi 2. In this case, phi 2 is our complex conjugate. And then the last term we get is these two guys multiplied. So you can see how if we didn't have some trick to take advantage of here, we're getting sort of a mess. But actually, because of our orthonormal wave functions, this is going to turn out to be really easy. All right, so we foiled those wave functions. Now let's take advantage of the orthonormality of this set of wave functions. So what that tells us is that if we take a look at psi 2 squared, well, that's psi 2 times psi 2, and then we're going to integrate it. So that's going to give us 1. On the other hand, this guy is psi 1 and psi 2 multiplied by each other. That's going to give us 0. This here, similarly, is psi 1 and psi 2, also going to give us 0, because they're orthogonal. So those guys are orthogonal. They have different subscripts there. And we were told that these are orthonormal wave functions, so we know that when we multiply them together, we're going to get 0. On the other hand, this guy is the product of psi 1 times psi 1, and so that's going to give us 1. All right, so now we write out our function. We don't even need to know the bounds of this integral. We know what those integrals are equal to. And so we're going to get n squared times 4 plus 1. Because this guy went away, and this guy went away. And so all we're left with is the 4 times the 1 and the 1 from over here. And that's all equal to 1. So you can see we had this big, ugly integral with four different products of wave functions, and we solved it in 12 seconds. And that's why orthonormal wave functions are nice things to deal with. So now we're going to get n squared times 5 equals 1, which tells us that n is going to be equal to the square root of 1 over 5. We divide both sides by 5, take the square root, and that's our normalization constant. So now we have normalized this linear combination. What we just solved for was this n right here. So even though phi 1 and phi 2 were normalized to begin with, when we mix them together, they don't generate a new normalized wave function. And so that's what we just did. We normalized this mixture. Let's take a look at one more example. All right, this one is going to look pretty similar. The main difference is we now have the letter i floating around in here, and we're going to have to deal with that. So once again, when we normalize our wave function, we're going to go ahead and integrate psi of x star times psi of x dx, and we're going to set that equal to 1 to normalize it. All right, and in this case, what we're going to get out then is the integral of n times i phi 1 plus 1 over square root 3 phi 2. But take a look at this. We're plugging in for the complex conjugate, which means we have to take the complex conjugate of everything inside this parentheses. So this is going to be a complex conjugate. This is going to be a complex conjugate. And notice now we have an i there. So this i and our complex conjugate is going to become negative i. So that's really the only difference between this problem and the last problem. All right, and then we're going to multiply that by our original wave function, which is i phi 1 plus square root of 1 over 3. We'll write it the same way, which is 1 over square root 3 phi 2 dx. And we know that's all equal to 1. Again, we need to FOIL, and we can pull out our n. So we're going to get n squared times the integral. Then we're going to multiply this guy by this guy, and that's going to give us negative i squared phi 1 squared plus 
this guy times that guy, which is going to give us actually a minus, not a plus, minus i over square root 3, phi 1, phi 2. And this guy's a complex conjugate. Then we're going to do this guy times that guy, and we'll get plus 1 over, or i over square root 3, phi 1, phi 2, where phi 2 is now a complex conjugate. And lastly, the last term is going to be when we multiply this guy by that one, and we're going to get 1 over 3 phi 2 squared dx equals 1. And now we're going to use our orthonormal properties. We're going to look for orthogonal ones, those are 0. We're going to look for normalized, or for normalized ones, and those are going to be equal to 1. So here we see the same thing. We see psi squared times psi squared, so we know this guy is going to be equal to 1. This is psi 1 and psi 2. I should be saying phi 1 and phi 2. Those are phi 1 and phi 2. And so that's going to give us 0. Same here, phi 1 and phi 2 is going to give us 0. This, on the other hand, is phi 1 squared. So that's going to give us 1. So the middle ones are orthogonal. The outer ones are just normalized. They're the same uh, wave function multiplied by itself. And then that's going to give us n squared times negative i squared. Remember, because this part just becomes 1, so we just bring down that guy. And then lastly, we'll have plus 1 over 3. This guy's 1, and so we just bring down that guy. And that's all equal to 1. All right, first, what's negative i squared? That turns out to be 1, because i squared is square root of negative 1 squared. So that gives me negative 1 times a negative. It's going to give me a positive 1. So what we're going to get is n squared times 1 plus 1 third equals 1. And what that's going to tell us is that n squared times 4 thirds, when we add together those fractions, equals 1. And finally, that will imply that n is equal to the square root of 3 over 4. So that's how we use orthonormal properties to normalize a linear combination of wave functions. So remember, if you ever have an orthonormal set of wave functions, which you very often will in quantum mechanics, when you're multiplying the same wave function by itself, you're going to get out one. If you're multiplying two different wave functions from that set, you're going to get out zero. So that helps you resolve these integrals in a very easy way. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. Ask any questions you have about this episode below. As always, you can subscribe by clicking the Real Chemistry link there. Thanks for watching.